Early retirement is a trap in waiting for the unwary. It's very easy to fall into the trap. However, if you're planning early retirement, it can be avoided. In this video, I'm going to talk through a few things with you. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the myth of early retirement. The second thing is my own story of early retirement. The third thing is what the retirement trap looks like. And then finally, I'm going to give you some tips on how to avoid the retirement trap. First off, let's talk about the myth of early retirement. I envisaged it to be endless hours of leisure, indulging my hobbies, playing golf, going horse racing, no work, no stress, none of the hassles of work. That was the myth. A time for relaxation, a time for growth even, a time to chill out and just have a good time and be happy. After all, no work meant surely all play. Isn't that the myth? Isn't that what we look forward to when we think about retirement? Spending lots of time with our loved ones, spending lots of time with our kids. Yeah, absolutely. That is the myth of retirement. And to some extent, that is what early retirement did look like for me. However, the reality was slightly different. Let's talk about the reality of early retirement, at least how it was for me. I retired at 44 after I'd been working for 25 years. I got my first job when I was 19. I worked for somebody else as an employee all the way up to age 30. And then I set up my own business, only a small business. We grew it to about, I guess, 70 people uh, at the point at which I exited the business. Uh, when I left, I was 44 and I was looking forward to early retirement, although I hadn't really given it a huge amount of thought. If you watched any of my other videos, you'll know it was a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction to to the death of my father. So at the end of the day, I hadn't made a lot of plans and I'll talk about that later in the video. But here's the reality of early retirement for me. The first six months were fantastic. I retired in the May, uh, so the summer was looming, the good weather we have in the UK, of course. And we got away a lot traveling, spent time in Portugal, jumped on a Mediterranean cruise, managed to tick a few things off the bucket list in the first six months. My son broke up from school around about the July, so I got to spend a lot of time with him. He would have been seven, I guess, at the time. So that was wonderful. It was it was good to spend that amount of time with him. I hadn't really been able to spend weeks and weeks on end with him because of the pressures of work and the demands of my job. So that was fantastic. But reality started to set in for me in the winter. It was a little bit different then. We did get another holiday in during the Christmas period. But other than that, dark nights, poor weather, couldn't really indulge any hobbies that were to do with the outdoors. And I hadn't really thought about what I was going to do with my time. So I actually found it quite tough that first year in early retirement after that honeymoon period was over. That was my experience of it. And I think I could have made it a lot easier for myself, definitely. And we'll cover that uh, a little bit later in the video. So yeah, I found early retirement not quite the idyllic scenario that I thought it was going to be. That is why I think that retirement can be a trap if you're unwary. And I was definitely unwary. And here's the trap. You haven't got a great deal to do to fill the time and the void that's being created because you're no longer working, especially if you did what I did, which was just retired almost on the hoof without making any plans. Because this is the reality of retirement. Any friends that you've got that are around your age, well, they're still working. They're not going to be able to spend any time with you. What about your work colleagues? Well, you're not going to see them. They're still working as well. And if, like me, you've been the boss, you're definitely not going to see them because they've moved on. They've got a new boss. They've got somebody else to impress. You're no longer in their life and the chances are they don't want anything to do with you. So that was my reality of retirement and what I found and why I found it to be a little bit of a trap. Not just that, my wife was also busy. She had built her life for herself over the previous, I guess, five or six years. So I couldn't get to spend the time with her that I was probably hoping I would be able to do because I'd retired. She had a busy life. Her life was very much centered around the school and our son and the other ladies, the mothers that she'd become friends with. So she was spending a lot of time out and about with them. You know, the sort of thing, coffee mornings, ladies what lunch, that type of thing. She was busy and I didn't want to intrude on that. So I found as the winter set in that I had some pretty long days to fill, a real void and I started getting depressed. Uh, I really did. I started feeling really low, really down, partly to do with the weather. 
It's not good here in the UK. We didn't have a holiday planned until around about April, May. So I had a good three or four months to fill in and I really struggled with that. That was the trap. The trap was there was nothing to do and it was very easy to be bored. There's an old saying about, you know, if every day was Saturday, what would life be like? And the reality is, yeah, every day was Saturday and it got quite boring. That's the reality of the situation as I found it. However, all is not lost because you can avoid that trap. Here are the tips on how to do just that. First up, you need to make a plan. Please don't retire like me with nothing to retire to. That was the fundamental mistake that I made. I had nothing to retire to. I had made no plans other than a bit of travel. And when the winter set in, that's when the void became quite alarming, to be honest with you. I had a good example as well because my dad retired from the police force when he was 56 after 30 years. But he didn't retire to nothing. He retired into a part-time job a couple of days a week working for a firm of solicitors as an advisor on police matters. That was a great plan. I wish I'd known about that. That's the right strategy. That's what I should have done. I should have had something lined up to go into. And I could have done quite a few things, really. As somebody who'd owned a small business, I could have gone into business coaching, business advisory. Maybe I could have become a non-executive director, working with other small firms in my sector. But I didn't do any of that. I just did nothing. Quite frankly, I lounged around in my dressing gown for most of the day. And that is no way to live a life. And it's certainly no way to use your brain. So yeah, that would be my first tip to you, make a plan, have something to retire to. My second tip on how to avoid the retirement trap is to make sure you and your partner, your spouse, your wife, husband is on side with what you want to do. You need to have discussions with them to find out exactly where will they fit in now that you're retired. And if they can't fit in, if they've got they're very much their own life and you're going to intrude on that, then you have to factor that in when it comes to your decision to retire and what you're actually going to do. The third thing that I would advise you to do is to talk to people who've retired ahead of you, people who are on that path a little bit further down the road than you. Have a chat with them. Ask them what they did. Find out how they coped with these things. Did they have the same challenges as you? What did they do? How did they overcome the obstacles that they faced in retirement? I'm more than happy, if you want, to have a no obligation chat with you over a virtual coffee if you think that'll help. I'm 63. I've been retired for 19 years. I've gone down a lot of cul-de-sacs. I've gone through a lot of bends in the road. It's not been an easy journey and I've managed to overcome most of the obstacles that have been presented in front of me. So if you do fancy a chat, there is a link in the description. But I definitely advise you to have conversations with people who've already retired. If your parents are still alive, talk to them. Have a conversation with them. Get some pointers off them. Sadly, I couldn't do that. My dad had passed away the year before I uh, retired. As I've said in another video, his passing that was very much the motivation behind me retiring. So I couldn't sit down with him and say, hey, dad, uh, you retired when you were 56. How did you cope with the transition from being full time as a police officer into part time as a solicitor's advisor? Couldn't do that, I'm afraid. But there were plenty of people around who I probably could have had conversations with if I just thought it through, planned it out, reached out to them. There's no excuse, I don't think, now not to do that. There are so many ways you can reach out to people, whether it be via YouTube, LinkedIn, social media channels are all there and they're available. Reach out to people, have a chat with them and see if they can help. The fourth tip I'm going to give you about how to avoid the retirement trap is to get used to your own company. Now, if you're an introvert like me, that's going to be easy to do. Of course it is. I'm very comfortable with my own company. But I know for the extroverts of the world, that's not quite so easy. But I think you're going to have to get used to it. There aren't going to be loads of people out there that you can hang about with. And there is a case for saying that, particularly if you're an extrovert, that you might have to consider maybe staying at work. I hate to give you that advice, but that might be the best thing for you. But if you can get used to your own company, then that opens up a whole new set of possibilities. And the thing that I started to do is I started to go on what I call solo micro adventures. Nothing grand. We're talking about things like catching the train to a city that I'd never been in before and having a day trip, going and having a bit of a wander around, going to the art galleries. For me, it's quite easy to get to London. London's only two hours away by train. So I used to go down to London, have a wander around on my own, go to the art galleries and that kind of stuff, have micro adventures. The other micro adventure that I was very keen on was I used to get my backpack. In fact, I still do walking boots and I get out into the dales for the day with a packed lunch uh, and have a great time on my own and just get used to it. Get used to being on your own. It's, it's not a 
a bad discipline to have. The other thing about solo time is that it's actually really good for your mental health. It's a great opportunity for you to reflect on the awesomeness of nature, the wonderful things that you see when you're on your travels. Reflect on them and enjoy life. The fifth tip that I'm going to give you to avoid the retirement trap is almost the opposite of the previous one and it's get out there, make friends, make connections, volunteer, join clubs, maybe get a part-time job, do things that bring you into contact with other people. It's not impossible to make new friends after you've retired. I've made quite a few new friends after I've retired. However, the only thing I would say on that topic is don't chase friends. I did do that to some extent and I've covered that in previous videos so I'm not going to go into it in great detail here but don't chase friendships be open to friendships and make yourself available and make an effort to get out there meet people and do things there are so many things that you can do you can join investment clubs you can join walking clubs tennis golf all sorts of things to do with sports there are various things that are related to more intellectual pastimes should we call them get out there meet people and you're not likely to be lonely so those are my tips on how to avoid the retirement trap. I hope you found them useful. If you did, then please comment below. Also, I'd like to hear from you if you've already retired. What did you do? How did you cope with the transition from working life to retirement? Did you continue to work even just on a part-time basis? Did you give up completely? Please share your story in the comments. It'll help other people. You might also want to watch this video next. Life is short, how to spend it wisely after 50, where I share tips, obviously, on how to spend your life wisely after 50. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. It's been uh, great to have this conversation with you. I hope it's helped. I'll see you in the next video.